Hello people, today I have with us the RX-782 Gundam Entry Grade, and this one is the Gundam Next Future Project Classic Color Ecopla, and this one in particular in that line is Made of Eggshells, which is what the uh, Gundam Next Future, I think, that project is all about. So it's a new type of material. It isn't exactly made of eggshells, but according to this, it's a new type of plastic containing eggshells used as a material to create some of the parts in this plastic model kit. Eggshells are a type of industrial waste disposed in large quantities from the food industry. Finding an effective use for them is a social issue, and various industries have proposed different uses. Eggshell plastic is attracting attention as a new material that reduces the burden on the environment by combining polystyrene resin and biological biomass materials. Parts of this product created by combining eggshells were in the Bee Runner. Now, um, if uh, you've built one of these before, you know which one the Bee Runner is. I actually kept the runners on this one because I thought this was a very interesting project. Try not to be too noisy. Uh, but that's this one here. You can see it's a vast majority of the parts in that brown color. So you can see it's most of the Gundam is actually on the B-Runner. Now when you open it and you take it apart, everything you uh, do as just as normal, everything is still plastic. It feels like plastic. But you'll notice that things are a little bit chalkier when you break them off their uh, nubs with the uh, nippers and I did notice that another thing you'll notice is that it's a lot heavier than the normal plastic that you use with the, the Gundams that said it wasn't any more difficult or any more stressful to make than uh, normal there are a couple of instances of as you see here nub marks leaving white and even after sanding it just makes it whiter so You'll have to be really careful with that, um, but it's not too big a deal if you know how to clean things up. You'll probably be just fine. Now, I personally have not built a entry-grade regular Gundam like this one. I did build the new Gundam. I don't have the Strike Gundam, um, but this one was my first uh, entry-grade as well as the Wild Departure from Normalcy being this uh, Next Future project. So I was in for a lot of surprise when I built it, and I, I really did enjoy the build. I, I really liked how everything went together. I really liked the uh, the face, the way everything's set up, the body, the way everything is part separated, the joint system inside here, no poly caps on this build. It's really incredible. I, I really appreciate the effort that they put into this. I know people gush about the entry grade a lot, but uh, I've never experienced it. So this being my first time, it's my first time to see what uh, what really made this tick. Now, besides the odd features of the plastic, I did notice a lot of 30-minute mission-style connections on here. You see this uh, Seagate-style connectors on the um, joints. Same thing with the, the arm, the elbow joints. Uh, but it was pretty cool. I, I actually enjoyed seeing some of the stuff that they use in the... 30 minute missions on this guy here. Pretty cool. Some of you will argue that that was part of the fine build system that they did. Uh, and that's where the 30 minute system, 30 minute mission system came from in the first place. I and mean, you're right. I just, I happen to know about the 30 minute mission stuff. And that's where I like, that's my, where my brain resides, uh, fine build or not. This was a very unique setup to put together. And I do like seeing those C, C connectors on here. Now people complain that they do get loose, and that's true to a point. So I hope that this one stays nice and tight for a long time. But seeing as this is my first time reviewing an entry grade uh, RX-78, I'm going to go ahead and do a articulation check, and then we will go ahead and do a size comparison. So starting with the head, you have the ball joint in the neck, very similar to any other Gundam that you normally get. That is Ooh, there you go. Nice looking baldy here. Uh, that is connected to uh, the same style ball joint in the base here. So you get a two ball joint system. Should 
shoulders here actually latch on to a joint that goes into the body here. So those can be moved freely from the arms, but not by much. The arm itself is in a very unique looking system that like you can see, that's the joint that the uh, shoulder rides on. But the, uh, the arm itself goes onto the mechanism that's built into the body and allows you to move it up and down a little bit further than you would normally be able to with just the ball. Really, really substantial motion, uh, range of motion there. So it's pretty cool. And then, you know, if you want to, you can uh, bend it other directions as well. You do get a rotation at that top part right there at the shoulder and an articulation point at the elbow, ball joint at the wrist. There's a rather complicated setup inside here that allows a lot of articulation for the abs. So you can see inside here, there's a ball joint that goes into the bottom there. Let's see if I can get some light in there into the front bottom of this piece and then it curves down and goes into the bottom of this one so or the top of this one and so you get a lot of articulation out of that very cool very substantial stuff so you do get a point of rotation there because it is ball jointed into the bottom there is some articulation on the sides here on a ball joint unlike how normally they put a peg and then uh, just the simple up and down and then rotation from that, it's on a ball. This does flap up on here, uh, maybe. I know it does. There's a round piece here that goes across and I know it can move. There we go. So you get that little flap there that helps you let move the legs a little bit. Simple ball joint on the legs. As you see here, it already separated. Uh, this one here rotates inside the top of the leg, goes over the ball joint in there. No drop down, no uh, fancy articulation inside the crotch, but that's okay. So you do get that rotation here. And again, ball joint, so you can move it quite far up and pretty decently back until you run into that back armor. Of course, two points of articulation at the knee. So you get that fine build or 30 minute missions gate connectors here and here, and you can move that quite a lot. Depending on how how and where you move the joints, that's how, um, how far you can arrange those. You do get a point of articulation at this armor bit and at the foot. You get a C-clip style connector, just like the 30 minute missions that lets you rock on the bottom of his leg. And last but not least, you get the ball joint inside his foot, which allows quite a lot of motion as well. Two more points of articulation we get. You have, um, technically speaking, not articulation, but you can remove this from the shield and move it upward like this. So you can hold it in his hand or fold it downward and peg it into his arm. With this one, you can rotate on that. And that goes on the side of his arm, like so. And you do get that articulation, like I mentioned. And then we also get the, um, I guess it would be scope. I'm not entirely sure what that is or what the function is on this gun, but that one will rotate along the axis on a smaller version of the C-clip here. Let's go ahead and get straight into the size comparison here. Now I have mentioned before that my GBN based Gundam here is quite a bit taller, uh, quite a bit taller than the normal Gundam. And this is about the difference that you'd see. Uh, so these are a little bit stretched out versus the normal RX-78. Uh, reason was a redesign based on the uh, Jim Jim from Build Divers. But you can see they're very similar. Here he is beside the Alto from 30 Minute Missions. Uh, this one is uh, also in 144 scale. And as you can see, it's almost as tall as the Gundam here. Here he is beside the 1100 scale Jinrai from the Frame Arms series. Here he is beside the Architect from the Frame Arms Girl series. 
beside the diminutive Hexagear governor, Nero, and beside his very close cousin, Alex Gundam, uh, in master grade scale, 1-100. So as you can see, this regular sized Gundam here uh, doesn't have anything a lot, doesn't have much to write home about in terms of size and scale. Uh, it's just the standard regular size Gundam uh, right out of the box. And uh, the only thing that it has going for it is that it is the entry grade, which um, means it's not actually the high grade. And that it's the next future Ecopla version. So... It is built out of that cool new plastic. And that's not to say that there isn't anything about the RX-78 that I don't like. I actually love this one. It's one of my favorites. And I was very thrilled to have built it. So um, I'm not dogging it just for being an RX-78. <laughs> uh, by all means, uh, let's see in the comments if I uh, hurt you guys' feelings in any way. I'm kidding. Um, but I do really love this piece. It, it has such a unique look to it. And uh, it's just it's just very unique uh, for what it is. Just a very unusual tech piece. I, for one, had a blast building it. It is a little bit more expensive than the normal uh, entry grade, which you can find them sometimes at Target still at less than $10. Um, they're supposed to be 7 I think, when they came out. So they were really cheap. And... Uh, this one was, what, 16? Maybe 12. I don't remember because I bought it with something else. And uh, it was one of those things that my friend got for me at uh, a convention. And they just happened to ask if anyone wanted something. So I was like, yeah, no, give me one of those RX-782s. Give me the Egg Gundam. And thankfully it came in. I got it. It was great. You know, I, I really enjoyed building it. And I appreciate the heck out of the person who got it for me. Hopefully they see this video and hear me saying that. But at the price, it's probably a little bit more than the average. Um, I would definitely say hold out to get an original entry grade if that is something that you are looking for. Uh, playability, I think this one being made of eggshells is going to be a little bit different. Um, I can feel it's a lot denser and it's probably going to be harder on the joints if I pose it a lot. So that's something I don't want to do. I've been thinking about it a lot. And once I pose it, it's probably going to sit still. It's just like I said, a tech piece, something that they did that's unique. And it's really cool, but probably not something that we should have a lot of. Maybe in the future they come out with a new technology that's even better. That also uses the eggshells, like they said, that's a lot of uh, industrial waste there. It's pretty bad for the environment. Um, so this is definitely something to behold. And oh man, the heaviness of this one versus, uh, you know, a regular high grade. It probably weighs half a pound and that's just so small. That's really odd for how uh, small it is. It might not weigh that much, but you know, just... The perception of weight is a lot different than the high grades that I'm normally used to. But with all that said, I think that's going to be it for the night. I appreciate you guys watching as usual. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this thing. It is very unusual and very odd. I think uh, it is one of the cooler things that I got this year. Uh, I hope they come out with more weirdo stuff like this in the future. Uh, but that's it for tonight. I'll see you guys next time or you'll see me, but more than likely you'll see my stuff. Bye-bye.